This video does not explain or suggest how to make illegal substances and is purely educational and theoretical. In my very first video we looked at the history and total synthesis of lysergic acid, the precursor of the psychoactive drug LSD. The old school and new school syntheses we discussed were cool, but they are quite lengthy, consisting of more than a dozen individual chemical steps. Well, a team of chemists recently reported a synthesis of lysergic acid in only six laboratory steps. Today we will look at this chemistry in detail and uncover some interesting insights. For example, how do chemists measure how trippy a molecule is? So, these scientists, are they a bunch of Breaking Bad wannabes? Or why would they investigate even more ways of synthesizing LSD? Well, as we already established in my first video, LSD derivatives such as bromocryptine can be pharmacologically useful for the treatment of neurological, metabolic and other disorders. This means that we want to get more efficient at making LSD-like scaffolds for drug discovery in future. In 2020, there was an interesting structure activity relationship study that showed for the first time that psychedelic compounds, such as derivatives of DMT, can be engineered to lose hallucinogenic side effects while retaining their useful psychoplastogenic properties. The left-hand side 5-methoxy-DMT gives you one hell of a trip. Whereas the isomer with the methoxy substituent shifted by just one carbon does not. While this might be disappointing for some of you, it's obviously better if patients are not hallucinating weird shit after taking their pills. If you wondered, trippiness can be estimated by looking at how often mice violently shake their head after administration of psychoactive drugs. This is a well-validated proxy for hallucinations and was first established already 70 years ago. You can see in this chart that while 5-methoxy-DMT leads to head twitching, actually in a nice concentration-dependent manner, the 6-methoxy isomer has no significant hallucinogenic activity. Before we continue, I opened a channel membership option on YouTube and Patreon. Check it out if you're interested. I appreciate any support to improve my 10 cent hourly salary I get in return for spending so much time on these videos. So how does this super short synthesis look like? The key bond disconnection that this synthesis is based on is an intramolecular HEC reaction which creates the key vinyl bond that is present in LSD. This HEC approach towards LSD is actually not an invention of the 2023 synthesis as it had been used in previous more lengthy syntheses already. However, the route we are discussing very efficiently traced the intermediate back to this indole containing an aldehyde, which lends itself to nucleophilic addition and a bunch of other functionalizations we'll look at in a second. This starting material is very convenient as it already has the bromo group required for the HEC reaction and can be bought commercially. Obviously, the starting material based approach makes a lot more sense than unnecessarily taking apart the indole ring further. Let's now look at the detailed reactions of the synthesis. The first step was a magnesium halogen exchange of this iodopyridine to create a heterocyclic nucleophile. It is very happy to attack the electrophilic carbon of the functionalized aldehyde, leaving a hydroxyl group in the product. As you might remember, there is no oxygen in lysergic acid at this position, so the next step simply remove this group by reduction with triethyl silane. The acid used in this step removed the n boc protecting group, so they reinstalled that afterwards. After this protection, the most nucleophilic group is the pyridine nitrogen, so it was methylated with methyl triflate. This gave a pyridinium salt which was reduced with sodium borohydride. Two hydride equivalents are accepted by the ring. The first one gives the reduced tertiary amine that is part of lysergic acid, and the second hydride reduces one of the double bonds, leaving an alpha-beta unsaturated ester. All of this happened in the same reaction vessel, so the offers were a bit sneaky and categorized it as just one single step. Now you might think, wait a second, to enable the key heck coupling reaction, the olefin actually needs to be located at the other carbon, which would require an isomerization. They achieved this by using lithium TMP as a very strong base, giving the isomerized anion which can be protonated in a diastereoselective manner. The desired isomer is the one where the ester is on the same side as the existing hydrogen of the six-membered ring. And while the preference of this reprotonation isn't that great, it's formed in slight excess over the undesired one. Conveniently, it can be recycled by subjecting it to the same conditions to convert some of it to the desired product. 
The Heck reaction proceeded with the standard mechanism some of you might know. Oxidative addition of palladium zero allowed for olefin insertion and creation of the CC bond here in blue. Now, given there are two beta hydrogens available, there are two pathways towards elimination. There's the orange hydride elimination and the pink one, which is preferred in a rough 1 to 3 ratio. Note that the stereochemistry of the ester was partially lost in the orange product, as this reaction was performed at 100 degrees with mild base, some isomerization took place. Even though they now ended up with three different products, it was no big deal. They simply threw them all together with some potassium hydroxide and heated things up to get to lysergic acid in around 50% yield. This is a double deprotection and isomerization sequence. Natural products usually correspond to stable isomers, so it's not surprising that the isomerization forms the configuration present in lysergic acid preferentially. Unfortunately, their final product is not so satisfying as they only isolated a brown salt. So I don't suggest supplying this to one of the dangerous dealers in the neighborhood. I've seen some procedures getting to nice white crystals of lysergic acid, but these folks didn't care too much about ultra pure product. Lastly, they showed that this synthetic route could be useful to explore and study LSD analogs. Remember the methoxy substituted DMT structures at the start? They started with a chloro substituted indole starting material and replicated all the reactions, including the HEC, to create a C12 chloro lysergic acid derivative. Now you could envision creating different LSD the analogs by converting the aryl chloride into other functional groups such as methoxy groups which might help scientists find future drugs based on lysergic acid with differentiated therapeutic profiles. That was it for this short and sweet video already. I hope you were all able to take away some nice learnings. If you liked it please subscribe, leave a comment, activate notifications and consider becoming a channel member. Thank you and until next time.